AI is going to play a huge role in the next generation of everything companies do. So if you think about the impact the internet had on companies and how it had changed their businesses, changed the way they operated, the way they sold their goods, AI is going to have the same type of impact. It's going to be used in a variety of different ways, including changing how your customers interact with you from a business perspective, but it's also going to help you become more efficient and operate more efficiently and drive costs down so you can pass those on to your customers as well. So it's going to have a massive impact to the industry. Many people talk about the, the pros and cons of, of this. Is it gonna you know, change the, the world so you know, we don't have jobs and things of that nature? And I think very similarly to the internet, it is gonna change some of the jobs. I think it's gonna create a whole new category of jobs and it'll you know, erase some jobs as well. I think at the end of the day, as we did with the internet, we will adjust and the economy will adjust and the job market will adjust, but this is gonna have a big impact on how industries operate. AI in the cyberspace has been a pretty common thing for a long time. It's just we were one of the first industries to embrace it because we have so much data that we work with and the ability to apply mathematical models to that data to help protect customers has been huge. I think what we're seeing now is AI really being leveraged aggressively by the adversaries. So they're using it to perpetrate attacks, they're using it to simulate more realistic phishing attacks, they're using it to collect you know, reconnaissance inside an organization. So if you think about the way an attack used to happen there was some entry point into an organization in many cases that was fishing a human being in other cases it was just misconfigurations uh, then once they got in it was a little more human oriented and now you can just assume uh, they're gonna find their way in through an automated means really smart phishing attacks and then once they get in the AI just takes over it does all the reconnaissance itself it pulls down all the malware it needs it does all the things including creating the exfiltration points and all of that could be done without any human interaction. And that's gonna really up the game. And where that becomes problematic is you don't necessarily need super technical people now to perpetrate these attacks. We've already seen the commercialization of hacking through hacking tools. Um, now this is just the ultimate hacking tool. So now I just need malintended people to be able to take this technology and apply it in cyber attacks. And so what that means for us at Arctic Wolf is we have to be able to combat that. So we have to have AI in every facet of our operation from reducing the noise so our security analysts know what is real and what's not. It's from our defensive capabilities, understanding when we see malicious activity and looking at that across multiple different spectrums. So a lot of security companies focus on one particular area of security. We have to look at all these different attack surfaces and use AI to correlate that signal and identify if I'm looking at something from an email perspective and an endpoint perspective and a firewall perspective, those three things together may show off a, a pretty significant attack. Or if I was looking at any one of those vectors, maybe not. And then like many companies, we're gonna use AI to help our uh, customers interface with our product as well. We're gonna create an environment where it's very easy for them to get the data that they need, uh, very easy for them to ask a lot of the same questions they would normally ask a human being for help. So that's gonna make them much more efficient, get them what they need. And we'll apply that same technology to our own security analysts to make them much more efficient, much more effective. And so we're gonna be embedding AI across every facet of our organization. Operating at the speed of data means we don't need to do software releases to improve that capability. We can just deploy new models through our MLOps pipeline. And so we can truly operate at the speed of data. Business leaders need to be conscious of the economy of hacking, right? It's been around for a while. We've seen ransomware as a service. We've seen hacking tools typically coming out of locations where countries will not prosecute as long as you're not attacking that country. And they're also just enabling usually less technical people to go perpetrate these attacks. AI is gonna explode that because now you, you almost have to have no technical capabilities. If you could think of a fully automated attack from, from infiltration to exfiltration to putting money into bank accounts, you can basically launch a piece of AI to, to perpetrate an attack and just money shows up in your bank account. You had to do nothing. That's gonna really explode the use of this from an adversarial nature. And it's gonna force us to up our game. It's gonna force businesses to really understand if they have the right security in place to protect against sophisticated attacks like that. And it's not a, a, you know, a whole plethora of products that are focused on one particular area. You need to have eyes on across everything and a holistic view so you can take signal from every different area and use the AI against the AI hackers.
Yeah, so there's a lot of talk about the fully automated sock and the ability to eliminate the human being from the sock. I think that's a little bit of a fallacy. I have a Tesla and I love to use the self-driving feature. I will never use it without my hands on the wheel and foot near the brake because it's just, it's prone to make mistakes just like any machinery will. So AI is getting smarter and smarter and smarter. There's no question about it. It's gonna make us be way more efficient in the sock so you don't have to have as many people as you would normally. Um, but you still need to have that expert, that, that person who could bring context in that AI won't be able to. The ability to overrule something that just isn't quite right. And, and we see AI, even the, the, the new gen AI stuff, really in often cases generate phony information because it's only as good as the information it's trained on. And so that human being, particularly that security operator who has years of experience, battle scars from being in the trenches, they're gonna provide a level of intelligence and operational execution that the AI just can't do. So to me, when I look at security intelligence, I think it's the combination of human and artificial intelligence. Those two things together is where the power comes. Yeah, so I think um, Gen AI and things like ChatGPT have really come to the forefront of the people who maybe weren't paying attention to AI before. It's the first time they can really interface with it. They can ask it questions, ask it to do things, and they get a response back, and it's, it's kind of magical in some ways. In cyber, we've been using AI for a long time, and we've been using it in more kind of invisible ways uh, as a defensive mechanism. So I think in our industry, particularly here at Arctic Wolf, most of the UI that's going to be doing all the security work, our customers won't actually see. It's within our data pipeline, it's within our, our data collection and observations and, and things of that nature. And so we'll be doing a lot of protection, we'll be doing a lot of noise reduction with AI. Customers will see the benefit of that through better security outcomes, but they won't necessarily interact with it. And of course, like everyone, we're going to embrace Gen AI in a variety of ways as well, uh, particularly for things like interfaces. So we can take our, our awesome concierge delivery model that we have today and be able to scale that in ways by augmenting our human concierge service with the ability for customers to get some basic interactions done with the digital concierge. So we're gonna embrace it as well, but most of the real benefit, the better security outcomes you're gonna get are things that you don't even know are happening. AI is gonna start to, like any technology over time, be a little more commoditized. So we're gonna be able to share that information more. I think we're still in the early stages of organizations really building that skill set, and they're using it for their own internal purposes. But you're already seeing a lot of open source Gen AI solutions that are, are being put out to the market. So I do think as an industry, even within cyber, we're, we've been well known for sharing you know, threat intelligence and a whole bunch of information across security vendors. I do see a world where a lot of that AI will be shared for the benefit of our mutual customers. But because it is such a unique thing and how it's trained, what it really boils down to is no model is gonna be completely portable. It's gonna be more uh, leveraging the type of methodologies that you can do and apply it to your own training data set. And the one thing Gen AI is very good at is collecting lots of data from across different sources and be able to build that training, the large language models. But it's one tool in the arsenal of different types of AI. There's multiple approaches to AI. Uh, again, Gen is the more recent one that everybody's getting really excited about because they can they can touch it, feel it, and live with it. Uh, but you know, we have to bring a full tool set of AI methodologies because as with any tool, a hammer is good for pounding nails. It's not necessarily good for trying to screw a screw, right? So you have to bring the right tools for the right job.